Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show today. Another episode of Gentry in a Jiffy. This is the new segment, if you missed the last ones, where I discuss things in a shorter, more concise manner to try and answer all of your frequently asked questions. You can email in at theurbangentry at gmail.com. I'll leave uh, the address there. Or feel free to add your question for future episodes in the comments below. So today we're going to talk about watch winders, and I, I'll quickly get the wristwatch check before, uh, out of the way before I get into it. I'm wearing my Rolex Explorer. I haven't worn it for a while. Got it out of the bank because as you guys know, well, if you watched last episode, uh, I'm lending it to my good friend Andrew. I've had this for over a year and a half now. Still my favorite watch. Still love it. I'm not going to bang on about it. I know I talk about the Explorer a lot uh, over the last few years. Uh, but what I will say is that I'm wearing it on this collarweb strap. This is a vegan strap, very soft interior. The exterior has this interesting kind of, uh, almost like a hobnail kind of crosshatch pattern. Reminds me a bit like the waffle dial of a, of a um, Royal Oak or something. Uh, but I have to say it's very comfortable. The material has actually slowly formed the shape of my wrist and it's extremely light and comfortable kind of goes with the Explorer. Yeah, I'm gonna miss it. But anyway, Andrew, enjoy it. So this question comes in from Joe Mai 357 He said, I'm interested in automatic, but I don't wear a watch every day, uh, especially when I work. So I was curious if there is a watch winder you can recommend or what to look for when shopping for one. So this is an excellent question. In fact, several of you emailed in very similar um, questions. So thank you uh, to everybody. Right, let's get into it. Well. First of all, there's a big reason why watchmakers hate watch winders. The first thing is the dangers of overwinding. And this is more typical with cheaper watch winders. And there's a very good reason why I spend more and I would recommend a Wolf watch winder. So we'll get back to that in, in just a moment. What happens when, uh, when you're overwinding a watch? So overwinding will not have an immediate deleterious effect. It's a very gradual, slow, grinding of the mainspring as it's overwound on the, the barrel that houses it. In fact, I was talking to a watchmaker just yesterday that I'm interviewing for the channel. That video won't be up for a couple of weeks yet, but it was fascinating. A master watchmaker, he was uh, disassembling um, uh, Speedmaster at the time, and uh, but usually he specialized in really high-end horturology um, stuff, and he absolutely <laughs> loathes watch winders. In fact, the way I use the watch winders, he said, was the only technically the best way or the correct way to, 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 to use a watch winder. We'll get onto that in just a moment. After a long time, if you just have all your collection on a giant, you know, like a wall of watch winders, that's a big no-no because you're just grinding down, you know, it's, you're tiring out the watch. Watches should stop and rest. And that's what the wolf winders do. They actually count the turns. They have circuitry in there. It's a precision instrument. It's not just some cheap thing that turns. And it's very carefully calibrated. Some, some of them are even calibrated to specific movements and brands. Um, so take a look at their website. It's the only company that does that. And that's why I have one single wolf winder. I tend to have just a few watches in rotation. So I'll go to the bank, for example, I, I got the Explorer out. I got a, what else did I get out? Um, yeah, a Tudor. And they're both automatic. I'll wear this and I'll have the Tudor on there and then I'll swap around in a couple of weeks when I'm bored of them, well, so to speak. I'll never be bored of them, but you know what I mean. When I want to try something else, I'll put them in the bank and I'll have another two or three at home for obvious reasons. So that's how I operate and that's fine because in the bank, they're gonna sit there and don't worry about the oils drying up because especially with the newer oils, I, I forget when the cutoff period was, but there was a slow transition to synthetic oils that dry up less quickly. In fact, actually that's what one of the contributing factors to Rolex, for example, extended the period between servicing because the, the oils, uh, the lubricating oils inside the movement, they're just that much better and they don't dry up so much and thus there's less wear and tear and grinding on, in, in all these uh, parts that are uh, causing friction, you know, 
uh, inside the watch. Anyway, I'm, I'm going off on a tangent, but let's, get, let's bring it back to watch winders. Every month or so, or even a little bit more, pick them up, put them on the wrist, give them a wind, give them some love and attention, right? And then um, wear them for a few days and then put them back in the bank or however you store your watches. There's no need to have a big wall of watch winders for your whole collection. I, I mean, are you really that lazy or uh, look, some people, if you've got the money and you don't care. But the thing is, I care about my watches. I don't want to damage them. If you look after them a bit better, uh, you're not going to have to service them uh, as much. So it really makes a difference. When I first started getting into watches, I just bought cheap watch winders. They overwind them, you know, they really overwind them. Um, so I recommend Wolf. I think they're uh, fantastically made. You can get them in all different sizes. They're, yes, they are more expensive, but it, like I said, it, the only watch wind manufacturers, watch winders, I should say, that actually count the rotations. They don't just go one way, they alternate. Uh, so it's a little bit of variation. Some watches, for example, uh, there are some Patek calibers that are unidirectional, uh, but that's just to make them thinner, less gears, etc. That's for, for a very specific reason. It's not a lack of refinement. But for a bi-directional uh, movement inside a um, Submariner, from my Submariner, for example, yeah, it will, it will vary. 600, 1200, or I forget what it is, in a 24-hour period. So anyway, I'm gonna leave it there. Um, I hope that has helped you out. Please feel free to add your comments, uh, advice as well. Your opinions on Watchwinders. Do you think they're good? Do you think they're bad? Uh, which uh, do you personally use? How do you use yours? I think that's the crucial thing. Watch winders are not bad as a whole. It's just you've got to have a little bit of um, consideration when is the appropriate time to use them uh, for our watches because we love our watches, right? We don't want to damage them, right? So anyway, please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. Thank you very much for watching and I will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao. This is a public service reminder for the good gentry. Please follow us on Instagram, join the Facebook UGWC group and click on the bell to keep notified of new videos. Don't forget to keep it positive, keep it gentry, onwards and upwards. Thank you.